Hello, my name is John Bennett. I'm your friend, your best friend, your only friend. My shtick is homeopathy. I'm kind of into the, uh, oh, by the way, I'm wearing black today because, because of John Cain, the passing away of John McCain our senator from Arizona, interesting guy. You know, if you see something once, you'll probably see it again. I think that's the same is true with the judgment. If you see bad judgment in a person once, you'll see it again. You know what I mean? If you see an anomaly once, you'll probably see it again. If you see something strange, you'll probably see it again. So anyway, my shtick is homeopathy. Did you know that, and specifically, my shtick is uh, physical tests for homeopathy. You know, like the dielectric stress test, like the nuclear magnetic resonance test. Do you know that there's been 18, up in, between 1966 and 2000, in the year 2000, there were 19 published tests for homeopathy? using NM, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. Isn't that remarkable? I mean, what is that, 60 years of, of nuclear magnetic resonance testing? Well, not 60, probably more like 50, 55, half a century of testing using nuclear magnetic resonance of homeopathic substances, which they say have no physical index Anyway, this has been a fascinating topic for me for about 20 years. So, um, trying to think of what to talk about next. I've been really getting into uh, Easter Island. You know about Easter Island? I think maybe Easter Island out in the South Pacific is the Eastern Nakdrong most the most eastern not farthest east spot on the globe can go in the eastern expansion of man actually that's not true i guess it would be chile be the easternmost but somehow easter island kind of represents that furthermost outpost it's 2300 miles out in the middle of nowhere I mean, the most isolated spot on the face of the earth. And they have this head there, this statue made out of basalt or some kind of stone, quarried there on the, on the island of this head, this kind of, a, kind of a, like no forehead, you know? The same face, and there's a thousand of these monoliths on Easter Island, a thousand of them. And they're all the same guys, the same face. But who is that guy? Who was that guy anyway? Is that the god of the Rapa Nui? The Rapa Nui, those are the people on Easter Island. For the most outpost, a god. I've thought that the further east I go, the more well I'm treated. In Portland, Oregon, I'm treated like a criminal. When I moved to Virginia City, Nevada, which is east of Portland, I was treated like a minor celebrity. And then in 2010, I was uh, asked to speak at a conference of, on the science of homeopathy. That was basically a ceremony that was given in my behalf. I mean, I was like the, not the keynote speaker, but they gave me an honorary degree in homeopathy. This is at the, the Hahnemann College of Homeopathy in London. And it was back in 2010. And I mean, I was treated like a king, like a king. They rolled out the red carpet for me. I gave a talk on the structure of liquid water and its, and its relevance to homeopathy.
physical if some of the physical tests for for uh, homeopathic su super molecular solutions. It's called the su super super molecular chemistry of the homeopathic remedy. And I gave the same talk at the Cavendish Laboratory. Laboratory, not lavatory. At the invitation of Brian Josephson, Nobel Laureate for 1972 on jo for the Josephson effect. He invited me to give my talk on the super molecular chemistry of the homeopathic remedy at the Cavendish Laboratory. So uh, as far as I know, I'm the only homeopath that has spoken at the uh, Cavendish on the physical aspects of homeopathy. It's quite a distinction, you know. So anyway, I was very well treated there. And then in, in 2016, I uh, was invited by the Kant Foundation to Paris to receive an award, the Yves Lane Pre Award for Research in Homeopathy. So how about that? See, so I, I think maybe I know my stuff when it comes to that. Most decorated homeopath on the planet. So I've been thinking, well, geez, if I went to India, you probably treat me. I mean, here I was treated like a king in, I might a celebrity in Nevada, a king in London, the emperor. They treat me like the emperor in Paris. I mean, they gave me this huge, put on this huge French dinner for me and uh, had translators there to translate what I was saying into French. And they said, please speak slowly so we can translate that, get to talking real fast, using big words that they didn't know how to translate, like molecular dissociation, plasma, 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 get back in this house, plasma fourth state of matter, which is this, which is this, the phase of matter that everybody's missing. Get it, you know, would you finally get your pointer on it? It's, this is a, this is a fourth phase event. Homeopathy is a fourth phase event. The reason the Avogadro was, in the, I'm sorry, this is a dissertation, but it, the reason Avogadro's number doesn't apply to homeopathy is because the molecular content has deionized by the sixth decimal dilution. What do you think of that? So all this uh, Avogadro stuff is a bunch of baloney. These are ionic liquids that we're dealing with here. I'm not even running off the dog. He thinks I'm mad. It's okay. It's okay. This is Hudson, my dog. I, can you see him? Hey, come here. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Hudson Le Pew. Hudson LaRue. Hudson, where are you? So anyway, I was thinking, the further east I go, the better I'm treated. Like if I go to India, where homeopathy is really big, they'll treat me like a god. Minor celebrity in Reno, Nevada, a king in London, the emperor returns in Paris, and a god in India. So what would I be on Easter Island? I must be the re reincarnation of Rapa Nui. That's that guy on Easter Island, the, the big head guy. Yeah, so I want to go to Easter Island and set up shop there and broadcast these video productions from Easter Island, at least for a few days. For as long as I could take it. It's so isolated there. Well, let's see. What else are we going to talk about today? This whole thing about judgment. You see it once, you'll see. If you see it once, you'll see it again. There's no original thinking. Well, there's some, but not much. If you think you've had an idea, it's because it's because you just think you had an idea that nobody else has thought of. Well, really what it is, is that if you have an idea, it's probably not the first time that somebody's thought about it or tried to do something about it. So don't don't get to thinking that you're going to be creative. Check out the literature on the subject first. You know, when I first got involved in this, the, this whole homeopathy business, the idea that was floating around was that there was no physical index 
for these high di highly diluted solutions. If there weren't any tests that would determine what it was, nobody knew what it was. What is what is this stuff anyway? It's supposed to be pure water, there's nothing in it. Well, it turns out that there is. And there really was quite a bit of literature when I applied for the uh, million dollar challenge to prove homeopathy, this offer that I got from James Randi, the magician. Apparently, nobody was aware of any physical testing that had been done on these, on these remedies. So I, when I took Randy's challenge to prove homeopathy for a million dollars, I showed him these tests and he flipped out, started calling me crazy, a whole stack of them. You find that, you know, these guys, they, they come out and say, well, there's, there's not one thing that proves homeopathy. You can't prove homeopathy. You prove homeopathy, you'll get the Nobel Prize. Well, here's a stack of tests that prove homeopathy. Like nuclear, 18 published reports on nuclear magnetic resonance. How do you explain that? Where's that million bucks? Where's that million bucks you owe me, Randy? I came up with 52 different reports. That's $52 million. Were sent to me by the German Homeopathic Union. Yeah. So anyway, I see this profound lack of judgment swirling around me all the time. I mean, that was a profound lack of judgment, bad judgment on the part of Randy to offer a million dollars for something that was a, that he could have gotten out of a book, <laughs> out, of a, out of a magazine article, a trade journal, how to prove homeopathy physically. And this is kind of hard to talk about, but I feel compelled to do it anyway, as much as it might make people hate me. I really liked John McCain when he uh, first appeared on the radar, which was, a, which was for me, it was, a, I mean, I kind of remember him from the 60s or the 70s when he came home from being in captivity. But that was, I was just a kid back then. What I really became, began to notice him was in, uh, Around the, around, about around the time I was getting involved in homeopathy, around 2000, the year 2000. By involved, I mean really involved, really going for it. And McCain was running for president, and I heard this story about his stoicism while I was in captivity in Hanoi. And I was so impressed by that. I thought, you know, when, when he was running for president, I wanted, really wanted him to win president, the presidency. Really wanted him to become the next president. And uh, of course, George Bush won it. There's another story of bad judgment. God, I was devastated. George Bush and said we could have had John McCain. At least that's what I was thinking back then. Then he ran again in against Obama. And he picked Sarah Palin as his running mate. You know what Sarah Palin means in, in the old language? Sarah, the princess Palin, re again, the princess again. That's Sarah Palin's name in ancient Aramaic or something like that. Anyway, to get on with the story. And that really impressed me as being, selecting her as his running mate, as the potential next president of the United States if he dies, to me, it was profoundly bad judgment. And then I got to thinking about it. You know, dive bombing civilians in North Vietnam is also another example of profoundly bad judgment. I mean, that is stunningly bad judgment that you would find yourself in the cockpit of a jet airplane bombing civilians. You know, a bunch of babies and kids blown up into parts. I mean, come on. Where, where did where did that come from? I mean, you know, what did, excuse me, Senator McCain, what did you prefer? Did, did you prefer strafing or carpet bombing? I mean, what, what, was there a preference? I and mean, when you went on a mission, you could, well, today I'm going to strafe. Well, I did that yesterday. I think I'll carpet bomb today. <sighs> Women and children. 
Women and children first. God, it's just brutal. Brutal. That was a brutal era. And, you know, you see somebody exhibit bad judgment once, you'll see them do it, do it again. Well, this be, seems to be kind of the era of the sun, the uh, political du soleil. That, that hot August sun is coming out and burning everyone into confession, sweating it out. Oh, that's so hot. Ah, oh, that's hot. You know, all these confessions and all these people getting indicted. Because of what? Because of bad judgment. Made a lot of errors in their lives. You see bad judgment once, and guess what? It's probably a habit. You see somebody exhibit bad judgment once, you'll probably see them do it a thousand more times. It's just a way of life for them, denying the evidence of what's real. You know, once you've decided on what your beliefs are, no evidence can bring you anywhere off of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Once you've decided what it is you want to believe, no matter how much the evidence hits you in the face, you don't want to believe it, and so you don't believe it. You just deny it. God, we're seeing so much of that right now, this denial of the evidence. I used to have lunch with Jerry Andrus, who's an old magician at the uh, Portland Society of Magicians. And this guy was profoundly anti-homeopathy. This is back in the early days when I had just begun collecting these physical tests for homeopathy. And he and I would, um, before the meeting, we'd have lunch or dinner together for the meeting of the magicians. And we'd get into arguments about homeopathy. He said, well, there's no, there's no real evidence for it. And I'd say, yes, there is. And I showed him the studies and he'd push them away. This is a guy who sits on the council of the National Council Against Health Fraud. It's one of their board members. And he and they basically just assumed that homeopathy is a fraud. Well, here was something proving to him that it wasn't a fraud, that it's not a fraud. Take a look at these, stare, these studies, Jerry. Push them away. And he took out a pad of paper and pencil and he said, write down here some of the other things you believe in, like astrology and numerology and things like that. And I just sat there and looked at him. And suddenly he kind of like realized what it was that he was doing. He took that pad and paper. He said, oh, no, no matter. Doesn't matter. Never mind. Never. Never mind. Profoundly bad judgment. People can seem very clever, but they're obviously executing profoundly bad judgment. That's what I see in medicine today is a lot of people suffering from bad judgment. Yeah, I'm telling you this because I'm your friend. Don't forget that. I'm your real friend. Your best friend. Your only friend. So anyway, that's the kind of theme for today is bad judgment. And I think we're seeing some real bad judgment at the highest level. At the highest level is exhibiting profoundly bad judgment.